So I'll ask you a Steelers question oh, since God. here we go, right? I think you're going to finish last. Where, what do you expect from your Steelers this season? I think they finish second in the division. I think the Browns take it. I think that the Steelers, despite the collective wisdom that's out there, that the Ravens are once again going to be once again going to be world beaters. Um, I think that they're the the Steelers and Ravens rivalry is all based around the fact that they are generally speaking not anymore with. Roethlisberger v. Lamar Jackson. They're not mirror images of each other, but generally in the the way they team build and the way they approach things and they're interested in the same kind of players on the line of scrimmage and uh, at defensive back and everything else, they often vie for the same guys in that way. So they're, so they play the same style of ball. Um, I think the Steelers are going to be a little bit better than them. The big question with them is obviously the offensive line, but I'll remind you that the offensive line stunk last year. So the this thing of like, boy, that line's going to stink. Yeah, it stunk last year. People seem to have forgotten that when they went 12-4 and four and won the division. The youth, and there's an MVP with Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow has, the, well, there are three guys with Heisman trophies. Roethlisberger's the one with the two Lombardis, though. I'll still bank on the known entity even though he's long in the tooth, even though he's past his prime and doesn't move very well anymore. I'll stick with Roethlisberger and that roster going up against the Ravens and against the Bengals. I'm not trying to – to. Uh, I, I get that the Bengals fans maybe have some op, uh, some reason for optimism, but are they going to win the division or something like that? No. Give me, give me Pittsburgh. The one thing – here's a good bet. The total on their season is eight and a half wins. <laughs> I mean, they're going over that. They have an extra get 17 games this year. They've never had a losing season, Tomlin and Roethlisberger. So it's a good bet that they're going to go over that again this year. As you guys know, we are talking to the host of Minus 3 Podcast and NFL analyst Dave Damshek. Now, Dave, we, we were talking about Carlson Wentz throughout uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's injured. Why are we not surprised? But he will be back for the beginning of the season. With that division, everybody keeps talking about the Jaguars and everybody knows about Lawrence, but that offensive line's horrendous. I don't know how he's going to be safe. And, and he reminds me of Andrew Luck, a guy that they're not going to build their offensive line until maybe a year or two before he decides to retire at the age of 29. That's what it seems like is going to happen to a young Lawrence. But uh, looking at, the, at that division in Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, the, the way they've uh, really built that team defensively, uh, making the trades that they did last year to bring in uh, a defensive prowess. They have one of the best linebackers in football in Leonard. Uh, is there something that stands out to you this year if Carlson Wentz stays healthy where they could be a Super Bowl contender? I usually don't worry too much about uh, uh, – about. oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, seeing something there. Uh, excuse me. Uh I've gone back and forth on is 2021 Carson Wentz an upgrade from 2020 Phil Rivers. I'm unclear about that. I mean, look at what you've seen, though, the last couple of years. Wentz has been bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he looked kind of good coming down the stretch. When was that? I feel so lucky. COVID really screws up my timeline now if it was six months ago or six years ago. But <laughs> he did have a nice little stretch down the end of a season a couple of years ago. But, yeah, he was a, an atrocity last year. I do like that Colts roster quite a bit. And if they had a, a, a bankable QB, I might like them to challenge the Titans. But as it stands now, the Titans have the easiest path to a division title of anybody I can think of with the possible exception of Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Um, the You know, the Titans are not a flawless team, but they have a real good shot at getting the number one overall seed in the AFC because they should have four wins um, right out of the gate. Uh, with the Texans and Jags on the schedule. That's an incomplete roster that Herb and uh, Trevor Lawrence have around them. And uh, like I say, I like the Colts a lot, except that QB, ergo, Titans division to lose. Mm. I want to go back to the NFC West because you actually brought up the the fact that you like the Rams a lot. Another one of your hot takes that I saw on your Twitter was the Seahawks finishing last, which for a team that's been a playoff team, a consistent playoff team, and the one year they missed, they missed because Blair Walsh just all those mixed kicks that year and just missed on a tiebreaker. So why do you think the Seahawks finished last in that division despite all the stability? And if they do, is this the fallout for Russell Wilson and or Pete Carroll? Well, I think that's what it's about. I'm, I'm looking at that, and and I just said three minutes ago that Roethlisberger and Tomlin have never combined to have a losing season in uh, whatever it's been now for the two of them together, 16, 17 years. And the same thing applies to Carroll and Russell Wilson. The difference is 
that Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson seem to have some rift between them, and it's not a short one either. It's been like three years now since Russell Wilson and CR were talking about that they'd rather be in New York, and then they come back and they do all that stuff. And I don't love the defense in Seattle. I, I mean, I do love the pass catchers that uh, Russell has this year. But that West, like we say, is loaded. I mean, who, who are they going to get past? If you are really down on Cliff Kingsbury, that would be the reason to pick against the Cardinals. They're an incomplete roster too, but I mean, man, oh man, they should be able to score. They should be able to shoot it out pretty good with just about anybody. And at minimum, they do have pieces on defense. And that's what it's all about in the 21st century for defenders now is the honey badger is the quintessential guy in that regard. It's about takeaways and one or three special plays by your defense. Give yourself one or two more possession. Give your offense one or two more possessions over the course of the game. You don't have to statistically dominate. Just win the, as they say, the turnover battle. And uh, that's the most important. That's how the Patriots got the majority of their Super Bowl trophies. Well, also in, because they had the greatest quarterback of all time. But the defense, while not statistically dominant a lot of the time, was turning the other team over. And that's, that's basically all you need. I kind of like Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt and the pieces they have behind them, those young linebackers. Bringing up teams that have a rift with the quarterback. Um, Deshaun Watson at this point, I, I would venture to say he has his suitcase already packed by the door. He's just kind of waiting to see what fight he has to take out of Houston. Do you have any kind of idea where Houston's at? Are they still fielding phone calls? Are they telling Deshaun Watson he's going to be there for the foreseeable future? What is going on in Houston? Man, I don't know. I bet you he wishes he could take back – well, I wish he – Betty wishes he could take back a number of things, but uh, the uh, the stuff about like I'm done with Houston. I never want to be on the Texans again. I bet he laments having done that. It is crazy with the new cycle and everything else that this is one of the biggest stars who, when the season was wrapping up, remember around Christmas time, everybody's like, "Poor Deshaun, we got we got to find a way." to get him out there because in the 21st century, shame the devil. If there's a superstar who isn't in a perfect uh, situation, we must free them. We must liberate them for some reason. I'm not uh, clear on the reasons why that is. Why, why, but um, I, I, I don't know who's going to touch him now. I mean, I, I was a big, like, ah, come on, Mike Vick. Oh, who's, he's never going to play again. Somebody will get him. If you can still play, somebody will go get you. But right now he's kryptonite. Who's, who's really going to make a deal to get the Sean Watson right. That's a real bad look right mm. now. At least once everything is settled and resolved, and even if it is, if he's on the wrong end of whatever a court decides or whatever, there will be a time down the line where he'll get back into the league, I bet. But wouldn't Goodell find him in the short term, even if he did get traded? Is Goodell just going to be like, ah, <laughs> we'll figure it out later, man. In the meantime, go have some fun with your new guy. <laughs> I just don't think that's going to happen. So I, I, I kind of think he's... Uh, a non-factor this uh, football season. Really? Uh, I'm very surprised. We are talking to the host of Minus 3 Podcast and NFL analyst Dave Damchek. Now, everybody's picking Kansas City again. It, it really blows my mind. Yes, Not this guy. Uh, well, not you. <laughs> uh, you've got the Chargers and you have the Rams, which I, I, I'm very surprised. And I, I've always rooted for the Chargers, not because they were from San Diego, uh, and that I love that state, but uh, the fact is is I, I, I really like Justin Herbert, and I, I think he's going to be the next seed of great quarterbacks that we are going to see in this league. But we look at Kansas City and how talented Kansas City is, the acquisitions they've made at the offensive line. Everybody was like going crazy when they decided, hey, you know what? I'm getting rid of my left tackle. I'm getting rid of my right tackle, and we're just going to do – we're going to bring in Thune. We're going to move him to the tackle position. Then we're going to draft this guy, and then we're going to trade for Brown, and we're going to do all this stuff. And now we rebuilt this offensive line. It's a better offensive line. Are you surprised right now that everybody is picking Kansas City? And do you think Patrick, and I've said this over and over again since Patrick Mahomes has been uh, drafted, as good as he is and as talented as he's looked on the field, do you think he's a little overrated with the talent that he has and Andy Reid standing right behind him uh, on that sideline? I'm not questioning his talent. Andy Reid is a play caller, Mm -hmm. is great, all of that stuff. But, you know, once you start making 40 something million dollars a year, you corrupt the, the, the roster overall. And this is what 
why I keep saying about the AFC North, the greatest beneficiaries of Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield after this season, I'm guessing, will both get 40 plus million dollar contracts will be the Bengals and Steelers. So it's not good. The window, if you go back and look it up um, in the age of free agency, guys, it, the QBs who win, even with Tom Brady and all the Super Bowls in year 47 for him, <laughs> e- even factoring in Tom Brady's late stage career wins um, and Elway doing a couple at his end and Peyton getting that for, from a quarterback standpoint, a fraudulent victory in 2015, all of that, that was the team winning, not him so much. The guys who win the Super Bowl are in their are in their second to fifth years as quarterbacks, and that's not a coincidence. That's because after year five, that's when they cash in. That's when the roster um, goes south because you're paying your quarterback, and they're really even though we call a lot of guys franchise QBs and all that stuff, a lot of guys are middle class QBs who in year five six start getting paid like high class QBs, and Jared Goff has shown us and. Carson Wentz has shown us and a lot of other guys have shown us just because you pay them to be high class doesn't mean they magically transform into being that there are five or eight guys who actually can cover up the warts of the roster with their individual greatness. And I, you know, I, uh, I, I, I think there's, like I say, just a, a small handful of guys that are actually at that level and everybody else is, is fraudulent. So once you, you know, Patrick Mahomes though, is able to do that, but it's going to require even more from him going forward because the best roster he's been on is already in the rearview mirror. They're not getting better with him making that amount of coin, you know? So going back to the Steelers, they have some interesting uh, dilemmas with their skill players or offensive skill players. They drafted Najee Harris in the first round, which a lot of people are saying, oh, don't draft a running back in the first round anymore. It's not good. But Harris, very talented. And also the receivers they have, which one will emerge? So what do you think the expectations will be for all those guys this year? Who do you think will emerge, both from a reality standpoint, real football, and for fantasy, too? Well, Tomlin has a has a habit of having the uh, having a guy who he really features as his runner. It wasn't just Levy and Bell; he did it with James Conner, um, and you know, in the trans, Bettis was long in the tooth, and uh, you know, or, or he actually he was gone, so he inherited Fast Willie Parker. Anyway, the point is, Tomlin tends to ride one guy and not mix and match like uh, like Belichick is, a, for instance, or Josh McDaniels. Um, I, so I think Najee Harris has a really good year because they're gonna they're gonna grind him, but good. They're gonna they're gonna feature him. They're gonna feed him the ball constantly. And uh, if I had to if I have to pick one of those guys, I'll say Deontay Johnson. He was uh, the drops were really bad, and he he's physically super brittle looking. You know, he's he's slightly built. So I, I do worry that he's going to get banged up at some point, but um, of those pass catchers, I think Deontay Johnson is probably the best, but the, you know, the tight end Fryer Muth out of Penn state's looking good out of the gate. They do. The question is, I know it's Roethlisberger. Can he move and all of that? But I I think at 39, he's good enough. The question is the offensive line. And until we see it, we won't know. We can, we can say it's definitely going to be bad, but as I remind you again, it was bad last year too. And they still went 12 and four. Um, are they going to the Super Bowl? I'm not going to bet on that, but I think that they're relevant throughout the season. Oh, and uh, yeah. So I, I did I answer your question successfully? Yeah. Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. The thing with him is I don't know that it's going to change in his sophomore year that he's suddenly going to be um, dependable week in and week out because he's a splash kind of player where, where there are more dependable pass catchers around him. So it's not like he's going to consistently be a, an eight target a week kind of guy, but with the jet sweep stuff that Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator likes to do, he is a burner. So maybe he gets a little run that way. Some unorthodox points for a wide receiver in fantasy terms. 